Hey everyone, Mr. Kim Singh here, and today I want to tell you that this is how you should revise for your HSC maths exams. There's a lot of different strategies. Everyone likes using various things, like you know, taking notes, uh, writing flashcards, doing past papers, watching videos. Like, there's all these great resources out there now. How do we kind of make the most of that? These are just a few things that I have kind of noticed with students over the past couple of years, and how I, as a teacher, would recommend students study. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, the first thing to think about. Um, maths is when you are learning actually anything really um, there's kind of two types of ways that um, I see students taking the information there's this idea that we can have recall versus recognition okay and I'll tell you which one is which in terms of a learning perspective so if we take for example this question here so this question over here the question says what type of of relation is shown. This is something related to functions and relations. Um, and the answer for this one is one to many. Now, if you were able to recall that information, you didn't need any prompts or anything like that. You could just straight up say that the answer is one to many. Um, and if you had the options there, like in a multiple choice question, one to many, the answer would be C, obviously. But that's when you have recognition. So if you're prompted with something and you get um, some of those terms they're given to you and you can answer that, that's when you know you have recognition there. But recall is a bit trickier. Recall requires that you can access that information without being prompted. And when you think about it from a mathematical perspective, like which type of knowledge is more valuable? Well, think about how many multiple choice questions there are in an exam. There's 10 multiple choice out of 100 marks, right? So that's 90 marks that you're getting that um, is essentially recall, right? Whereas in other subjects, you may have more multiple choice, maybe you have 20 um, or something like that, right? Where this is uh, a type of question in the Mathematics Advanced paper, at least, that I think favors um, this idea of recall. You can actually access this information without it being prompted for it, okay? One thing that I like to do is um, memory before and after sleeping. So if you do need to memorize anything for some reason, for example, like functions, the conditions for odd and even functions, um, or you know, like the discriminant, there are various kind of properties there. Um, I like to try to revise these things just before I go to bed, maybe like 15 minutes before I go to bed, and then 15 minutes after I wake up. And I find that the memory retention for that um, is kind of increased in that way. There are some studies that show that, um, that your memory retention can increase if you try and um, learn something before and after, just before you go to sleep. Um, but even if uh, you find that it's not necessarily something that helps you um, any more than it would at any other times, at least it's a cue for you that um, you're actually revising and trying to memorize certain things. Uh, less so in mathematics, I think there are um, things that are worth understanding rather than memorizing, but that's just something um, to think about. Okay. Trial papers uh, and verse past papers. Okay, so the issue is that we're in a new course now, and so the older HSC papers are going to be really good in terms of the difficulty that they have, but they're kind of lacking in the topics. So the specific topics that they're lacking in, um, like this stuff here, the statistics, random variables, some of the financial math as well, um, that stuff is no, um, is new, sorry. And so you need to find other ways of getting that. So if you can find like other school trial papers, that's a really good way of doing that. Um, also, if you're looking at HSC papers, ignore any geometry or some of the parabola and revolution of solids questions there, okay? So uh, if you can get your hand on other school trials, um, if you know anyone, um, then that's a really good way to do it. Time conditions are ideal. So you kind of want to be practicing. You want to know what three hours feels like. Like three hours is a long time to be studying for an exam and doing an exam, right? So that's why you actually want to know what that feels like. Uh, it may not be feasible all the time, but um, even if you can break up, you know, an hour here and there, and you do that a few times, that's like, getting you comfortable with that amount of time in completing um, one paper, right? As always, you should mark your papers, write any correct solutions. And I think this is the best time to be doing your common mistakes and tips and tricks sheets. So I've gone through a few common mistakes before um, with you guys, but here's some examples of things that um, to look out for, right? Um, and tips and tricks, these aren't things that are mistakes exactly, but these are things that can make things a bit quicker. For example, um, your cos squared and sine squared equals to one, the sum of those equal to one identity is on your formula sheet. But if you need to access the other ones, you actually need to use um, other methods. So one of them is that you can divide by cos squared or sine squared to get, if you divide both sides by that, you'll get one plus tan squared is equal to sex squared. And then if you do divide by sine squared, you'll get um, 
what will you get here? You'll get cot squared plus one is equal to one on cos, hey, my cosec squared. Um, there's other ways to remember that, like mnemonics, like uh, one in cot is cozy, one in ten is a secret. Um, so those are the different ways that you can remember them as well, whichever way makes more sense to you, okay? Trick equations are another tip and trick here that you can look at. Uh, you can look out for ways to make them reducible to a quadratic. So this is an example over here. It looks like, uh, how would you solve something like this? Well, actually, cot is just one over 10, right? And so what you can do is that you can multiply both sides by 10 And then this actually looks like a quadratic because you have something squared, you have something to the power one, and you have a constant. And so you can actually let tan theta equal to x or to u or whatever, um, and then you can solve your quadratic in that way. So that's just one thing to look out for when you're looking at root u, permanent x. Um, one thing to look out for when you're doing trig equations. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is like some integration tricks. So if you have an odd function and you integrate from negative a to a, that equals to zero. And if you have an even function, if you do that same integral there, um, it's actually set mul same as two multiplied by that. And the reason for that is if you think about what this looks like graphically, like if you take a cubic and you take the integral from negative a to a, can you see how that these areas here, they'll actually just cancel out um, because this is the signed error, so this is the negative of that. Um, so they're actually gonna cancel out there. And for an even function, if you take like a parabola, for example, because it's symmetrical about the axis, um, if you go from negative a to positive a, then these two areas, if you, they'll actually be the same. So you can just multiply one of them by two if you go from zero to a. Yeah. All right, so these are some things that can save you time or some things that certain questions may require. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Okay, last thing I wanna finish off with is video. So, um, you know, I love videos and I, and I love uh, making videos to help students learn. And I've also kind of, noted down how I've learned from videos as well. Um, one thing that I like to do is have organized ways of um, presenting those videos. So for example, if you go to my channel, um, I try and make sure I, I categorize things or by course or by topic. So you can see I've got you know, extension two, extension one, advanced, and I've got different topics there as well, right? So you know, calculus, um, sequence series, trig, um, logs, stats, all that kind of stuff there is kind of separate. So you just have to click on one and then you can find anything that you need hopefully pretty easily. Um, and the good thing about videos as well is that like lots of different people are doing them, right? So actually, uh, Maths Links, if you go to this website, I'll put all these in the description, um, but you can actually see lots of different presenters as well. And this one is really great because it's actually um, sorted by um, like subtopics and things like that. So you can see um, we've got uh, me there, you've got Mr. Wu, you've got Virtual B15, uh, you've got the HSC Hub, you've got all these different places where you can access um, different videos and different presenters because if, if the explanation from one person doesn't really work use someone else because um, odds are that um, one explanation is not going to be the best for everybody yeah uh, what else we got and Drolla Drolla is really good too if you have a subscription to that um, because their content is organized in a really structured way like all these different topics here um, they have progress checks they have um, their topic tests and things like that um, and so that's a really good way to check off what I'm saying that there's quizzes and things like that so uh, another valuable resource there for you and last one, um, there's a lot of different kind of free websites that actually do a similar thing. Um, I guess theirs is a bit different because, um, again, they're kind of like um, collecting all this stuff from different presenters and things like that. So this is called Free School. If I go to mathematics, um, you can just see all these different kind of topics here and things like that, right? Um, just to finish off, <laughs> this is what I do. You may not necessarily find this helpful. I like to watch videos at 1.5 or 2 times speed just to you know, get through that content a little bit quicker as long as it's still comprehensible. Like you don't want to just be watching stuff for the sake of it and watching it two times speed if you're not really understanding anything. So actually take some time as well. Don't be passive. Don't just watch there. It's not like a documentary because um, you actually want to be active in your learning. This idea of like recall versus recognition, right? You actually want to be like participating this in some way. I know it's like a virtual kind of thing, but um, take notes in your own words about how you understand the situation or how you don't understand. Like if there's something that doesn't make sense, like make a note of that. Like this is the time to like try and fix that now. You've got a month to go. Um, and so that's kind of the last thing I want to leave you with, right? Um, it's been a tough year, but hopefully, um, you know, we will get through this all together. And um, hopefully those kind of tips have helped you out with that, okay?